Hey friends, it's Jessie. Welcome back to the channel and happy Star Wars Day! It is May 4th, so I felt like it was only fitting to do a Star Wars themed get ready with me. I have my trusty lightsaber and of course Luke and Baby Yoda are joining us in the back. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. I actually have my own lightsaber. It's kind of like rose gold and pink, but my battery was dead, so we are stuck with the boring blue one. Hate to disappoint. We all know pink is the superior color. How do I turn this off? Sorry if I'm out of breath. We just got back from California yesterday, and the elevation change is just wrecking my lungs. But I wanted to do a fun Star Wars themed get ready with me. I wanted to talk about my California trip. It was very eventful and all sorts of fun stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. As always, I will be linking all the products I use on my face down below. And of course, it's not really a Star Wars video without my little baby Yoda sweater and scrunchie. The palette I'm using today is actually my Darth Vader palette by ColourPop. ColourPop actually just announced their new Star Wars collection, which unfortunately I am not using today because there is no release date as of the day that I'm filming this. But I figured Darth Vader, second best thing. <sighs> Where to start? So we went back home to California for two weeks. It was so fun, much needed. I really needed that in my life, honestly. I just, girl, I get burnt out so easy. I'm like, love my job, just would rather be a stay at home dog mom, if we're being honest. This trip was very significant because if you don't keep up with me or this is your first time on my channel, well, welcome, happy Star Wars day. I have a service dog in training and this was his first trip. So this was his first time flying, his first time being out of Utah. And so it was a really big deal that he got to go with us. And that's gonna come into play a lot later in the story because we had some issues. So the flight itself, amazing. Bruce, my dog, had uh, a couple minor issues with security. And by minor, I mean like very, very minor. So we got to go through the priority security line, which is where the uh, people with disabilities and I think like a list members or something like that. I'm not really sure what you call it, but like, frequent flyers, people that have a lot of credit with airlines um, can go through security. So we got to bypass the majority of the security line. That all went perfect. We had one issue with a guy that was behind us uh, kind of stepping on Bruce's tail and like putting his bag like right on the tip of Bruce's tail. So he had a little bit of an issue there, uh, just kind of like grumbling because the guy behind us was not very considerate but the security itself went great uh, we had to go through I was very anxious flying in general gives me so much anxiety and doing it with my service dog where it's something new for him and although we've trained for it and we've prepped for it it's definitely like scary it's terrifying. I'm looking for my Dior powder that I cannot find. I have bags all over my desk because I was gonna film a haul and then I haven't filmed it. I left my phone in my pocket, so I had to hand off Bruce as I went through security. I had to hand Bruce off to the TSA agent. This is so light, oops. I messed up, that's fine. Happy accidents. And then I had to go back and then put my phone on the conveyor belt and go back through, which it was fine, it was fine. Bruce, I was nervous about that because Bruce had never been handed over to somebody he didn't know before, but he did amazing. He had no issues. He was just kind of like WTF, like what is going on, but no reaction. Perfect, perfect, perfect. He is considered a service dog in training, so there is wiggle room for boofs and minor mistakes to happen of course nothing big like he can't have accidents in the store but with it being his first experience and him still very much being in training i was nervous about it even up to the gate he was flawless we stopped and got some i think chinese food for for breakfast because we had a flight like around lunchtime so i got him some rice and then we just hung out at the gate. Because I was traveling with a service animal, I did get pre-boarding, so they boarded us first. The thing about dogs, people don't like to sit next to dogs, and airlines don't like to sit people next to dogs. So they had us board first, and they told us where to sit. They had us sit in the very front row in the bulkhead, mainly because there's more space, and Bruce is 
a on the larger side i wouldn't consider him a big dog but other people have considered him bigger he's about 45 pounds so they had us sit in the very front row and that was no issue the only issue he had on the flight there was the flight attendant uh was not really respectful of our space and kept leaning down and kind of like getting in his face and he did not like that he very much did not appreciate so he boofed at her a couple times if boofing is just kind of like a singular like barf, like a bark you know it's just like singular bark so he did really good though and then we got there lax was very stressful for him the airline misplaced his crate because we flew with his crate and it's just like a wire one that we folded up they misplaced it so we had to wait for like an hour for them to find it and then we went back home to my husband's family i was really nervous about that as well i just have a lot of anxiety we got to his family's house it took him about two days to fully adjust at first he was really nervous and just didn't want to be like without me like he wouldn't leave my side he's like i just don't want to be in this room with like strangers by myself and he definitely struggled a little bit it was new for him he's going from a house where it's literally just like our little family like me my husband and my dog to a house with like four strangers that he's never met and so i can understand how that was a big difference but we worked through it my trainer walked us through uh different ways to make him feel comfortable and all that so it was great i wouldn't say we did an insane amount i let bruce have a ton of downtime because i knew the transition from utah to california was going to be very difficult for him he's in a new space a new environment everything is different so i really didn't want to put that much pressure on him so i really just worked on basics with him just like basic obedience basic leash etiquette like all that so i didn't force him to really push himself in terms of like tasking and all that i still have not unpacked any of my makeup from the trip so everything is everywhere his favorite day i would say is the day that we went to san pedro and i can never remember the name of this area i think it's like the korean friendship bell or something i will include pictures so you guys can see our cute faces um, but we went to this park it's like right on the coast and then there's this giant bell we had a lot of fun there so we played ball we ran around bruce got to sniff all the things and then we rented like uh one of those like bird scooters and bruce was very interested in seeing everybody ride those so he was a happy little pup that day and directly after we went to target and it was my first time seeing an Ulta Beauty in Target. Like I haven't seen one before. I only have one Target near me here in Utah. And while it's not my favorite, they have a pretty decent selection of pretty much everything but beauty products. But seeing an Ulta inside Target was insane to me. I was so excited about that. So Bruce got his first minor Ulta experience. I do plan on taking him to Ulta, uh, hopefully in the next month or two, just when I know that he's going to not lick the testers. <laughs> I'm sure he won't, but you never know. So I'm waiting until we're solid, you know? Solid, solid. But he loved that. He had so much fun. Uh, we also went to Walmart. He got to pick out some toys. Uh, I got him this giant tug rope, like this giant rope that he can play tug with and he loved it. We also got him a frisbee prior to the trip that he could bring and play with. And we also got him one of the Super Chewer Bark Box toys that is like a it's like a hard chew toy wrapped in like a fabric toy. Bruce loves to destroy his toys, so we thought that was perfect because he gets to rip the fabric part of the toy off and then it's this dense chew toy. So he got a lot of fun treats there. But that brings me to our least favorite part of the trip, which was our Disney day. Love Disney. Am I even allowed to talk about them on YouTube? I don't want like no lawyers or nothing to come at me, but we had an experience. So like I said, Bruce is a service dog in training and both in Utah and in California because I had to double check the laws before we went. Service dogs in training are covered um, by the same stuff that service dogs are. So I can take them anywhere for the sake of training, any public access places, as long as he follows the standard, like the two main rules of like no accidents, like bathroom accidents in the area and like no 
being a nuisance basically no being a hoe so we had planned to do downtown disney instead of actual disneyland because i figured disneyland would be a really hard outing for him i talked with my trainer a few months prior about what she thought would be feasible and what she thought wouldn't and she had advised against disneyland there are a few reasons for that one is it's just a huge situation for anybody like disneyland is overwhelming for humans much less dogs so she had advised against it and in addition to that there are also a lot of not very nice people in the service dog world that live in california and will go to the parks with their not super great dogs just for the sake of bullying other service dog handlers and just being being not very nice. So she had advised against it, but she was all for the downtown Disney aspect of it because my idea was that we were just gonna go and people watch and it was gonna be fun and dandy. And that was that primer stuck in my lashes. That's cute. So we show up, I have a normal routine that I run with Bruce because one thing about being a service dog handler is routine is very much a thing. So we have our routine. So as soon as we get there, if he's not already in his vest, I will put him in his service vest so he knows that we are in work mode. And then I always take him to use the bathroom first thing. In fact, he is trained that as soon as we get anywhere before we go in, he will go out of his way to find like grass or like an outdoor area that he can use the bathroom before we go in just because he knows that we're not going anywhere until he uses the bathroom, both number one and number two, if possible. And then after that, we play, get some energy out and refocus. Focus is a huge thing. We just, we have some games that we do just to make sure he's completely focused on me. So then we, after we did our routine, he had no issues with either of those things. We started walking and we were over, if you've ever been to Disneyland, there is like a hotel, it's like the Pixar Pier Hotel. And there's a huge parking lot behind that hotel. And we had to walk a, a pretty significant distance to the entrance of downtown Disney. And he had no issues the entire time. He wasn't pulling, he was focused. There was a lot of people moving around. There were strollers, there was kids. People were like grabbing his butt. People were talking at him, not a single reaction completely fine. The issue we had came when we actually started getting within like eyesight of the security. You have to go through a security process to get into downtown Disney. I think it used to be just to get into the Disney parks, but they somewhere in there, I'm not sure how recently, switched it to like the downtown Disney area as well. But we didn't make it that far because they have these like security guards or like these workers. I don't even know what you'd call them because they don't really look like security guards. But they have these workers that are just kind of standing there and if you seem like you might be of concern they will pull you to the side and talk to you so we got stopped by the security guard she looked like she was a little bit newer she wasn't completely sure of like protocol and everything but she pulled us to the side and Bruce was still fine at this point. He was great. And she asked, is this a service dog? And I replied, yes. And then she asked what he's trained to do. So those are the only two questions that legally places can ask you about your service dog. They can't ask what your disability is. They can't ask specifics about your condition or anything like that, which is gonna come into play later. I've never had an issue with access before. I've been stopped before, I've replied before, and I replied as normal. I was like, yes, he's my service dog. I don't really wanna out myself as to what exactly is wrong with me because I just don't know if I'm ready to share that with the internet, maybe in the future, but for now, I'm not, I'm not ready with that. I explained what he did. I basically told her that he alerts in response to my medical condition. And she was like, oh, well, that sounds like an emotional support animal. And I was like, no, like he's a task trained service dog. He's trained in several different tasks to help me with my disability. He alerts in response to a medical condition. Like, I don't know how that Sounds like an emotional support animal, you know? But anyway, she was like, okay, let me go grab my supervisor and ask him. So at this point, I'm starting to get anxious. Bruce can sense that. And like I said, he's still in training. So he is allowed a wiggle room for mistakes. And Bruce is sensing that I am getting a little nervous because this girl is stressing me out. And the supervisor comes over and he's just like in a sit 
like down at my feet so he's like literally just laying at my feet and the supervisor comes over and he is you know like asking the same questions like is this a service dog and I said yes and asked what he does so I said again like he alerts and responds to my medical condition and he was like like that's a that's an emotional support dog like that's not a service dog and I was like no sir like this is a trained service dog like he is task trained he knows what he's doing he helps me with my disability and he was like I'm not asking for your personal information, but like what specifically does he do for you? I don't have to tell you that. Like I legally don't have to disclose that information to you. Like that is completely rude to ask. Like specifics as to what my dog does to help me. Like people are not allowed to ask that. That is why most service handlers will say like what their medical condition is like alert response and this guy was not having it he's like i'm not trying to ask for your personal information like he kept saying that like as if to cover himself so if i were to complain he can be like oh like i told her not to give me anything but he kept saying like i'm not trying to ask for your personal information but what does he do for you specifically and so i told him i was like legally i don't have to disclose this to you but because you guys are giving me such an issue like I, I will tell you because I don't want this to happen to somebody else because I find this completely ridiculous. I told him specifically what he does, several of the tasks he does, and he was like, oh, well, like, that's not, that's not a service dog. Like, that's, that's an emotional support dog. And I was like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Like, at this point, I was just frustrated. I was tired of arguing with these people that don't know what they're talking about. He has psychiatric tasks that he is trained to do. So he is a service dog. And I told him that in the state of California, like, service dogs in training are recognized and have the same rights as service dogs. And we're allowed to go to any public place for the sake of training. The guy was like, well, like, I just can't have that today. Like, that's that's just not gonna work and at this point they brought out like the actual like Disney police and the police dogs to intimidate us so they were kind of behind the guy a little bit but they were watching us and the dogs were watching us and intimidating us and I could tell that it was making Bruce very uncomfortable Bruce did a little grunt at the dogs that were intimidating us like these police dogs are not friendly they're very aggressive they're trained to be aggressive like that is their job because if somebody's being stupid you know like these dogs can go after them these dogs that were purposely brought out to intimidate him made bruce grunt and because of that the guy was like okay well i'm gonna have to say no today because if he's not gonna stop barking like we can't have him in there and it was like he's not barking like he just grunted because you guys are intimidating the like absolute bejesus out of us like he was like, well, you might run into other service handlers in there and I can't have you barking at like other dogs in there. And I was like, he literally will not bark at other dogs. The only reason he grunted was because you're bringing freaking police dogs up in our face. And I think that would make anybody nervous. So he turned us away. We left. I was very distraught after that. Bruce actually had to alert to some things as we were walking back. My heart rate was just getting way too high and he had to alert me that I needed to chill out for a second. He did exactly what he was supposed to. There was absolutely nothing wrong with what he did. And like I said, he's still considered in training. These types of mistakes are allowed to be had. And the fact that they turned us away wasn't what pissed me off that much. Like, you know what, whatever. People are going to be stupid and that's fine. Like, I mean, it's not fine, but I can handle just people being stupid and like ignorant. But what I can't handle is this guy straight up told me my dog was untrained. He told me my dog was untrained because he grunted at a very aggressive police dog and these people were getting all up in my face. Like they literally had people like blocking us from walking forward. It was complete overkill. And I feel like that would make any dog nervous. So we left and I talked to my trainer about it on the phone. I actually called her on the way back and I told her what happened and she was pissed. She was like, oh, like I'm gonna look up the laws right now and see like everything that went down and compare and contrast, you know? And uh, she came back and confirmed. She's like, yeah, like they legally were not allowed to do that. Like they just discriminated because they didn't want your dog in there. And I was like, I freaking know like I was there it was very frustrating like that's all I can say about it like I can't even say anything aside from it was just so frustrating and so unnecessary let me do my eyeliner because I cannot talk and do eyeliner at the same time side note um I think I'm gonna do a blue eyeliner because the lightsaber I used today was blue so this is deepened by Urban Decay I feel like this will be fun the joys of 
having disabilities. But that was our failed Disney experience. After that, we went and had a picnic. We got McDonald's and just had a picnic because we drove all the way to Anaheim, which wasn't really that far of a drive. Like it was only about 30 minutes. Aside from that, I would say that was the only big letdown of the trip. The other things we did were literally just spend too much money at Sephora. I have a lot of things that I purchased that I probably didn't need, but I spent quite a bit at Sephora. I made probably like three or four trips. Should I just talk about my really awful Sephora experience here? This was not in California. This is completely unrelated. This is actually at a Sephora near my house. So they just recently, like literally I think six months ago, opened up a Sephora. Actually at this point, it's probably closer to a year ago. They opened up a Sephora about 10 minutes from my apartment. So when I tell you I was excited, girl, I was excited. Normally I shop during the day, like in the morning, and I love the workers that are there. We recognize each other, we make conversation, it's always a fun time. This past three times I went, I had issues. I don't work at Sephora, so I can't say one way or another whether these people were in the right or wrong. I'm just talking as a consumer from a consumer's point of view, but I've also worked for Ulta and I know their policies and I just feel like Ulta wouldn't have done this. When the Melt Gemini palettes came out, I had ordered the original Gemini palette um, online order like for pickup. So you order online, pick up in store. And it said that it was in stock. I could order it online, so I did. I ordered that and I think like the Urban Decay Vitamin C All Nighter. I show up and this girl, it's the same girl in all three stories, shocker. This girl helps me out, you know, I give her my confirmation notice, whatever, she finds my order, she peeks in the bag to look at what I purchased, make sure everything was in there. And she's like, oh, you're not supposed to be able to buy this yet. And I was like, well, that makes no sense because it let me order it online, whatever. So she's kind of like putting up a fight, but doesn't really do much about it. Cause she's like, well, you already bought it. Like just take it, whatever. So I go back in to the store a couple weeks later, I think like two weeks later, I had ordered the Gemini 2 palette, but I'd ordered off of Sephora's website and it came broken. And I've had experiences in the past where things have come broken and I can take it in store and they'll exchange it for me. So I don't know if it's like by store, like policies are different and online, I did go back and check after this experience. There's no policy written anywhere about it. So I'm not really sure. But basically the same girl was at the cash wrap when when I got there and I brought it up, I had the new one in my in my basket and I had the old one so I could exchange it. And I brought my shipping label, like my shipping card, whatever. I was like, I just want to exchange this. Like it came broken. And she looked at me, she's like, oh, well, I can't do that. Why can't you do it? Like I've done it before. Like, why can't you do it? She's like, well, it's policy that we can't exchange anything you bought online, especially if it's broken. Like we just can't do that. I didn't want to be a Karen. I didn't want to be that girl. But I was like, girl, I've done this before at the same exact store and I've never had issues. And she's like, well, I don't know why. Cause that's always been policy. She was like, I can put the new one back for you. Like, you're just gonna have to go through online. And I was like, well, no, like I want the new unbroken one. So I bought that one full price. Cause I bought the first one during the VIB sale and I bought the other one full price. And I left, I was very frustrated. I called Sephora customer service and the guy was so nice. He felt so bad for what happened that he actually refunded me for the one I bought online and put, I think like $15 of credit on my account because he just kind of felt bad for the girl being not helpful. Then the third time is when the One Size Beauty blush and bronzer trios came out. I really wanted them and it said they were available in store so I decided to go. I checked online to see like if they were available and they were so I went in to swatch and see which shades I wanted in both products and they only had one shade out in the One Size Beauty end cap. That girl was working there and I, I gave her the benefit of the doubt but I asked her I was like hey like you know, do you have any other shades of this available? Like I told her the shades that I was wanting to look at and she took the bronzer out of my hand, gave it to her supervisor and was like, these aren't supposed to be out yet. Like you're not supposed to buy this yet. And then the supervisor agreed and I was like, okay, well, that's kind of weird, but then why are they all out? And are you taking them from everybody that is trying to buy them? Like, it was just so frustrating because they are out of stock of a couple shades. And so that's why I'd asked if she had the other shades. After that, I was just so dang pissed off at that Sephora. Like, I haven't been back in that Sephora in probably a month. Like, I'm just so frustrated. That is the story of the crazy girl that works at my Sephora. And like I said, I don't work at Sephora. So I don't know, maybe 
she is correct in policies and she's just not being very nice about it i get it if she's not allowed to do something like she's not allowed to do something i would never want someone to lose their job over me like wanting to buy like a bronzer you know it was just the way she did it like she took things out of my hand she told me i wasn't supposed to buy things on several occasions when it said i could buy them online and they were already picked like i don't think she was the one picking the orders I'm trying to think of what else has been new in my life for lipstick i have this gloss from the mandalorian collection this is in the shade dinjarin i can't pronounce that i'm gonna just do this i think there was a couple other glosses um but i this was the only one i could find in my drawer so this is the one we're using that is all for today's video friends thank you so much for stopping by and chatting with me i hope you guys are having a lovely may 4th and i hope you guys enjoyed the look i really like this look it's one of my favorites i feel like i do it quite often when i want something vampy for a night out please take care wherever you are i will see you guys all next time may the force be with you